Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2. Where we left off last time, we had arrived back in Hasango, we're going to drop off Bairn, but uh, Edir looks up expectantly as Bairn disembarks Invincible 5 without a word to anyone. Bairn begins to head off, staring straight ahead with sunken eyes and doesn't break stride when he passes Edir. Bairn. The boy has taken another several steps before he seems to have heard anything at all, and when he stops he doesn't turn to face Edir at first as though keeping his options open. A long moment passes, then with persisting hesitation, he turns. I'm not sure what you want to talk about. He really did walk a long way. I have my life, and I know it's because of you. Yeah, it is. I know I should be thanking you, but the truth is, I don't know if I want to be here now, or what I'm supposed to be doing, and I still don't know what to say to Aethys when I meet him one day. Maybe say he's a dumb god. It should be the other way around. He's the one owes you an explanation. Baron avoids Edir's gaze. You hear me, kid? He owes you. Baron gives an absent nod, looking down, and says no more. Uh, we were supposed to go see the corpse of somebody. A grave of somebody. It's supposed to be up over the hill somewhere. But I'm not really sure where that would even be. She was buried somewhere around here. I wonder what Edir's quest even says at this point. That's not the right one. That's definitely not the right one, and that's not the right one either. Maybe we're done it, technically. Anyways, let's go see if we can find the grave regardless. We're here, we might as well. I wonder if we can leave this place by foot. It is just a fort. This is an island, right? My dog is attacking his own tail, because he's a weirdo. So if you hear a sort of weird growling sound, that's him literally trying to take apart his own tail. He'll never catch it, because it's a short, stubby little tail, and uh, he is a little bit fat, because I feed him too much, probably. I'm not seeing a grave or anything up here. I'm not seeing any other way out of here, either. Nope. Yeah, I don't see a grave or anything, so I think we're done here. I'm just gonna leave. Maybe we can leave on foot, I don't know. We'll figure that out in a second here, I guess. We have a little bit of a walk. Also, you know what I just realized? It is extremely warm in my room, which is normal, because it always is. But, I did my laundry this morning, and now I'm wearing a very warm t-shirt that just came out of the dryer. This is a terrible, terrible idea on my part. Worst idea ever. It doesn't look like we can land on the island, but maybe we can land elsewhere? But there's nothing on this island, so I'm just gonna assume that there is no grave. It doesn't exist. We're going back to Nekataka, because we still have to turn in that, that one quest, and we need to level up Maya and... To Kehu. We're also going to quickly level up. No, my dog's about to puke. Excellent. Always a good morning. Oh dear. Anyways, we need to level up all our characters. No point in worrying about that now. Uh, let's see. Let's get rid of you and you. We need to level up those two. We need to level up you and you, and we'll get the other ones as well. We'll also give them some items. They're good for boarding, so I mean that's pretty much all I'm going to do with them. It's kind of irritating that we have to disembark from the ship, go back on the ship, pick up new people, and so on and so forth. I hope Aloth doesn't try and talk to us after we level him up, because I don't really know what I'm going to say to him. We've kind of been terrible to him. Mechanics and bluff. And we get Rogue or Ranger. Probably gonna go Ranger. Although maybe not. Improved criticals. When hurt or better, they get an accuracy bonus that are bloodied or worse. Resist. Uh, you know what? Let's try with survival. Uh, what do we get for Rangers or Rogue skills first, though? Let's check. Criticals. Immune to mind afflictions when bloodied or near death, which is awesome. We could also grab one of these abilities, Toxic Strike or Perishing Strike. 
I don't even know. Maybe criticals. I'll go with that. Next. You. I wonder what the level 9 chant is. Kind of curious. Plus one to all power levels. Just straight up. And. Plus one penetration for six seconds. And that's it. Okay. I guess it's okay. Nox flows back. Brilliant Inspiration. Okay. I'll pick up that one, I think. Hmm. Good enough. Alright, we'll burn through the leveling on our other characters. Yeah, maybe we'll do it later. I'll just do it between videos. Yeah, we'll do it later. I don't really need them at the moment. It'll just take time. It's kind of annoying that we have to leave... Um, ...the city in order to change our characters, but whatever. Not you. Oops, not you, not you. You and not you. You. Except... Back into Nekataka. Let's go back up to Serpent's Crown. We will just go straight to Serpent's Crown. Maybe we have to go in the main door of the palace in order to set off with a whatever quest for Sango. It is a distinct possibility. And we will switch up our group. I don't believe it. A copper pan from 400 yards? You're pulling my leg. Let's go to the palace. We'll go in the main doors because that sounds like a thing we should do. Then we'll head down to the brass citadel. And handed Maya's quest like as well. Let's Who are you again? Later. Oh. I don't like this breeze. Our Kamir kind of hasn't talked to us for a while either. I wonder why. Anybody home? Maybe talk to him. Coming is a favorable omen already. The prince nods and crosses his arms, a self-satisfied smile on his lip. How's that? You happen by a time when our rivals bicker and tear at each other's throats. Bringing Gatis chosen on your trek up the mountain. He nods to Takehu with approval. <laughs> it does not take a priest to see how the gods send us an outsider to dig under the skin of our enemies. Aruhi chuckles to himself and nods. You never know, it could be a bad omen. Bad to outsiders, I say. Anyone who can empty this hall of dignitaries is a friend to the Juana. I will not paddle around the island. My sister wants to know if you are as useful as you are disruptive. Ikira, but I hear whispers that you visited the Hazanui's Adra lighthouse and survived. Ruhi smiles, stroking his chin. Too much has happened for you to waste words with the royal brother. From now on, you work with Onikaza as an honored guest of her rooftop garden. Only... Be kind to her cats. Okay, bye. I guess I'm not talking to you anymore. I need to go talk to the Empress again. Hopefully, she'll be able to advance that quest line for us. You must or finish that one quest line for us, I guess. Is more accurate. And then what are we going to do? I really want to get the ghost ship, but no one's mentioned it in a while, so that hasn't been a thing. I'm sure at some point it'll come up. Absolutely not. You return intact. There we go. Nagati is not always kind to those who travel upon her domain. Onikaza touches her brow. Her brown? Onikaza touches her brown and nods. Her brown what? A messenger from the jaws of Tangaloa speaks with the voice of wisdom and change, I say. She raises her brows at you. It is fitting that yours should be the voice that tells of Hasongo's fate. What did you see there? Some Naga occupied the colony after Aerith has drained the Adra. I let them live. The snakes are on edge. Where comes this new boldness? Anakaza thumps her chin and narrows her eyes. Far be it for me to complain if they make trouble for outsiders. There is a wariness to her thoughts that she doesn't bother to hide. What of Aethus? If you know why he terrorizes the Deadfire, speak on. The Queen nods. He makes for Magrin's teeth, but I believe that is only a waypoint. Tapping her chin, Anakaza nods and weighs the matter. At length, 
Her even expression spreads into a pleased and knowing smile. If Aethys makes for Magrin's teeth, I say the Rathun will grind him to dust for the praise of their warrior matron. <laughs> you have no idea what Aethys is like. Her brow rises with interest. Even if they fail, it will be an enemy cleared for my plate. This is the gratitude of Nagati, I, I say. I doubt anyone could even slow Aethys down, much less stop him. Optimism has not abandoned me yet, Watcher, but I note your thoughts on the matter. I have slaughtered tons of them. And I don't think I could win against Aethys. From Port Maje to Hasongo to Magrin's teeth, Aethys follows a rich vein of Adra. It takes him northeast to more interesting territory. Interesting. In the deepest memory of the tribes, we have told stories of Magrin's teeth. Embellished sailors' fables, Akira. But not without some truth. Some truth. My people speak of treacherous seas, lakes of fire, and the ancient warriors hammered to life on Magrin's anvil. Anakaza props her chin on her fists and looks you up and down. Ashen Maw is the grandest and most accessible of the peaks. It is the sharpest tooth in Magrin's jaw. Prepare yourself for a fight. Any chance of support ships? Akira, would that our resources were not so entangled in other parts. I cannot send ships to Magrin's teeth any more than I would send paper dolls to a furnace. She arches her fingers together, staring intently at the point in space where they meet. If you make preparations in Nekataka, I say we can help each other. She sits up straighter and regards you with a level expression. I must keep the city's peace, and I have only so many arms and eyes. While the dead fire screams, I would see Nekataka outlast the storm to come. What do you need? What I need is a lasting peace that will outlive my dynasty. But I will accept peace of mind for now. Okay. What do you know of my water shapers, Herald of Bereth? I know they gave the Rautai no end of trouble in their early advance. Akira, if you recall history, then you know why I am protective over the guild. My water shapers are the levy holding back Rautai's advance. An adept standing at the prow of a war canoe is enough to send the fleet scrambling for the shallows. She eases back languid and satisfied. Don't get too cozy, Highness. That false sense of security will get you into trouble. Nice. Maya crosses her arms. Akira, I would not want your employers to think me easy prey. Anakaza purses her lips at Maya. This reminds me. I owe the Hazanui a basket of koiki in remembrance of the Battle of Nakaro Atl. She snaps her fingers and nods to an attendant who scurries off. Sounds... poking the hornet's nest? That is Aruihi's job, but... Akira, there is a side of diplomacy which I enjoy. She winks. While the problems of Aethys and overindulgent admirals plague these waters, I have summoned the masters of water shaping to Nekataka. Pit your strongest water wizards against their weight in iron and black powder, Highness. We can end this quickly. Akira, and how long will this contest last in open water? Anakaza tuts at Maya before shifting her focus back to you. Now would be the time to confer with Guildmaster Mairu, but she does not answer my summons. Anakaza looks out on her city, her hand squeezes down on the armrest. You think something's wrong? It is too early to grow a forest from this coconut. But I would not dispatch you if I felt at ease. Okay. The guild can suffer no setbacks. If Myru shirks her duties, her queen would know the reason. She stares off into the distance and sighs, her gaze unfixed. Nagati, do not abandon us now. Anakaza turns her gaze back to you and flinches. This was not a thought she intended to share. Well, then she should be a better cipher and learn to control her thoughts better. So we have a couple quests to do. First of all, we are going to go ahead to the Brass Citadel, turn in Maya's quest. And well, how do I get out of here again? This place is so weird. Where are the stairs down? That's that one. Yep, that's the one I want to go down. I guess I could have gone down those ones. Oh well. Such is life. When we inevitably do like a triple crown run, I actually haven't even looked at the achievements in this game, but when we do an you achievement playthrough, um, we'll be making custom groups. We won't be using any of the pre-made characters, probably. Uh, we need to go to... 
Where a uh, freaky outlook, I think. Right? The water shapers is locked. That is some BS right there. All right, we need to go to lower imperial command first. We'll go to Pariki's outlook soon. It's not that far, Empress. Grab some soldiers and head down to Pariki's overlook. It's like what a thirty-minute walk. Exercise your legs. You're in the middle of your own city. It's impossible to cheat at Hazatoa. Clear skies. He tilts his head as he watches you. His eyes unblinking. Maya has business with you. Indeed. I hope we return victorious. He turns to her with a bold, almost confrontational stare, a look that seems to mirror her own. It's done in any case. I'll leave you to decide what victory means. Etsura, care to explain what you've been up to? Maya has been assisting with plans to work toward peace in some of the more tumultuous parts of Deadfire. He raises his eyebrows, looking back to her. A noisy kind of peace, but it's all we're likely to get. Then we must take what we can. He stares her down with a challenge in his eyes. I'm certain Harama would agree. He's well, after all, thanks to your decisive action. He cocks his head. Twaha reports success and sends her thanks for your swift intervention. You have aided your countrymen with distinction. There is no higher honor to which a trencher may ascribe. He tilts his head towards her, emphasizing his words. But what of your own assignment? You sent Maya to kill a man. He shifts his gaze to you. For a most noble cause, I assure you. How do I have benevolent, and passionate, and honest? He looks pained. You've always been self-sufficient and resolute in purpose, Maya. It surprises me that you should discuss your orders so freely. Cargo shifts on long journeys no matter how tightly you tie it down, sir. Maya glances your way and nods. At ease. When it comes down to it, I know you will always do what must be done. He pauses, fixing her with his strange, unwavering gaze. Rawatai values your service, as do I. And Oops. I can think of no better reward for the rough country's finest sharpshooter than a piece such as this. He reaches below his desk for an archibus, which he presents to her with stiff formality. It is a superb, unstoppable shot. Unfit for melee, blunt to criticals, inaccurate, Archibus. Three bells through, it's called. It's kind of nice. I won't keep you. I know you both have plenty of business to attend to. Yep, I. All right, Maya, what do you got now? I feel like I should set the record straight. Maya folds her arms and wraps her knuckles against her bicep. Go on. I didn't get into this business so I could shoot first in a battle that hadn't even started. You know? I can make a case that my work was justified, but gods. Assassination is a big step in an uncertain direction. It is. Assassination We're is bad. We're shooting at people with dangerous ideas, and assuming the ideas will die with them. I take it you never ask these sort of questions when fighting in the Navy. It's a little different when the enemy ship is turning about, their cannons glinting like a spider's eyes. You don't find time for a lot of deep ethical discussions. You sound ambivalent. Ishiz is a good listener, but he's too dumb to offer much perspective. I could use some of yours right about now. Maya gives you an inquisitive look. Bullets are cheaper than armies. You're sparing lives and resources. It's true. We don't want to lose the dead fire by attrition. Yeah, you would definitely lose against, or lose against the Valians. Nodding to herself, Maya seems less thoughtful and more resolved. She cracks her neck and rolls her shoulder, letting out a relieved sigh. You're right. It's a hard truth, but the sooner we own up to it, the sooner we can move past it. Indeed. If we go out Sura's way, we had better be sure that killing the right people makes a difference. Damn sure. True that. And if we fall back on what we know, cannons, sieges, occupation, we had better commit to fighting a moving target. That's true too. We won't succeed if we don't understand the tribes. And something tells me that we aren't there yet. The tribes have the entire archipelago as their battleground. I'm sure the Navy would love to test their might against a challenge, even if Atsura is worried about the cost. Well, let's be off. Thank you, Maya, for sharing your insight. That's called strategy. Do I want to use that gun? I think our blunderbusses are better, but I'm not sure. Can we upgrade our blunderbusses? Not you. We can make them legendary. 
We can make the ranged attacks bounce extra, but negative 15% damage and more reload time, which kind of sucks. We don't have very many legendary resources, unfortunately, so maybe we won't make that one legendary. This one's not even... Wait, what? We're using exceptional gun? Ooh. That is grim. Okay. It's fine. Minus 10 accuracy, 50%. That doesn't matter, because we're using two of them. That jagged load's pretty good. It's not even super expensive, so we'll do that. We'll make it superb, because damn. And that's it for now. You must gather your now it's a little bit better. It won't suck as much. I kind of wanted to find like a soulbound blunderbuss, but I have not managed to pick one up. Also, I just noticed it, but... This guy's axe looks super cool. Look at that, it glows. I didn't even notice that before. So cool. Fortress protect you from the Audra Colossus? Much better than wooden huts, my friend. You, you must gather your party stand against such a force. What do we have to do now? Let's speak with the Guildmaster Myru. Okay, let's go do that, I guess. Up to Pariki's outlook. Uh, we'll just go to Archimir's Manor. We can probably just jump from Archimir's Manor out into the water. Shaper's Guild. It shouldn't take too long, I don't think. Maybe we should talk to Archimir. It's been a while since we've talked to him. He was doing some sort of weird scrying thing the last time we met, after we killed Consul Hot. Let's go take a look. He's not even here. Okay. He's downstairs in his basement. We can go there later. You must gather your party That's too much work. That's more work than I'm willing to put in to go talk to Archimir at the moment. Water Shapers Guild? What's going on, buddies? You're not doing your thing properly. And you're locked, so that means I couldn't even quick travel to you, which is odd and slightly concerning. What happened here? Oh, damn. There is a whole bunch of deads. Leave it to me. Like a lot of deads. Um, yeah, let's go find out what happened here. Go down this way, I guess. Hey, there's. Is it really stealing if there's nobody left alive? The answer is no. I'll see. You. Go Hello. Further. There is a situation in the guild hall. Yeah, I think there's dead people. The water shaper glances over his shoulder, his chest rising and falling with deep breaths. What say? Where is my room? To get whose brow creases with concern. Ah, for what did Nagati send you but to lend your strength? He nods and claps to Kehu on the shoulder. All is under control, I say. But the building is closed until Myru cleans up the mess below. He thumbs over to the blocked stairwell. You call this under control? I just waded through a pool of blood. Ikira. Naga blood. He raises a finger to correct you. Naga swam in from the waterways of our sanctum. We pressed back until they fled underground. Then Myru gathered her forces for a stand at Pariki's tomb. I am to guard the staircase. While she routes the last of them. E Kira, but my Ru is fierce for her years. He grimaces as another deep rumble shakes the earth under your feet. Snakes could not have caused that tremor. E Kira, we felt the quakes even before the serpent showed up. What's causing the tremors? <sighs> not snakes, I say. It's a dragon. A canoe frowns, worrying the back of his head. Unless they brought a battering ram. Why haven't you summoned help from the queen? We are water shapers. Onikaza knows we can walk over a few snakes. But not a dragon. Myru, though. I say she would not turn down reinforcements. He eyes you up and down, nodding as the idea takes root. Why are they attacking the guild? I do not know. With great purpose, they throw their bodies back to Rikuhu's bowels. I say this is personal. They strike with anger, not conviction. He turns his arm and studies a shallow wound. Hope Myru leaves something for me. Ha! I say you will have to run fast. She could cut through Naga like a harpoon through blubber. I will remain and dispatch any snakes who slither past you. Good hunting. Okay, we'll go down there in a sec. But first we have to loot the rest of the temple. Anybody around over here? No? Cool. We're just getting so much money worth of items. We are going to have just all the fortunes. There's nothing up there. Okay. I guess we're going downstairs into the guild ruins, although we're almost out of time on our video, so maybe we will run out of time before we finish this particular quest. We'll see.
The level scaling in this game is all over the place. It's crazy. Like, this is why I don't neglect your chores. Just is weird. This stone door is sealed shut. A few engraving symbols, engraved symbols, stand out among the other carvings and inscriptions. Apart from that, you find no evident means of opening the way. A faded inscription is nestled among the elaborate stone carvings. Read it. Buana runes decorate the stone entrance. Nagati would not have gifted her chosen people a watery covenant unless they persisted in deserving it. This sanctum is a covenant of our making. Only the sigil of the covenant, covenant and the words of my devotion will open the way. Freaky master of the guild. Okay. Well, we don't have the covenant or whatever we need, so let's just go. It doesn't look like they're winning against the Naga. I'm gonna go blow up that totem. Are these just exceptional? Yeah, they are. But they're gonna be worth a lot of money in the end. Which is fancy enough. Looks like Myru lost. Just putting them down one one by one. Apparently she's unharmed, despite the fact that she's on the ground bleeding. The guildmaster lifts her gaze to meet yours. Her eyes struggling to focus. She's been slashed and stabbed numerous times, and her robes are soaked with red blood. Myru, oh, gods, look what they've done to you. Tekehu covers his mouth with both hands as he surveys her injuries. Peace, Tekehu. I gave back ten times what I took. Too many, even for me. She's she sputters on a mouthful of blood, but still manages a red rimmed smile. Anakaza sent me to find you, but I think you need to heal her first. No time for that, I say. We have a priest like three feet away. She waves you off, grimacing. You were too stubborn to die, old shark. His voice wavers as a fresh gout of blood seeps between Myra's fingers. For once, Takehu, just listen. We have a. She's right here. She is maybe five feet away from you, and she can cast that far. Just cast the heal, and no problem. She raises a steady hand to cover his trembling one. <coughs> the rod. Of the deep. Oh, I've lost it. Taken. You'll need to. Myru uh. coughs, spitting up blood. For every word she struggles to voice, her breath gets progressively shallower. <coughs> Find the rod. Get through the stone door by the entrance. I'll find the rod. Just try to stay with me. Wards. Failing. Hurry. Before it escapes. Myru gives you a bleary look as her focus begins to slip away. Wards? I haven't seen any wards. Uh, pitied is Ngati. Lady of Lament, as the pearl orb of the... of the... of the heavens... She wheezes as she struggles to get the words out. It doesn't even sound like she's addressing you any longer. The guildmaster's eyes glaze over and she falls silent. Myru? Myru? Takehu takes her by the shoulder and shakes gently at first, then harder. At last he stops, pulling away and bringing his hands up to clutch his brow. By Ngati. She's dead. Strange last words. The words of Pariki's devotion, I say. An old prayer to Ngati. Takehu furls his br furrows his brow. It must have meant something to her. Well, let's go. We don't know. Akira. The others will see to her once we've cleaned up the last of this mess. Takehu regards Myra's corpse one last time before turning away. <sighs> see, this is where game mechanics separate from narrative mechanics. Because realistically, we should just be able to go... Resurrection. Boom. Everyone's back alive. No big deal. No one ever needs to really die. In game narrative mode, though, she just died while we did absolutely nothing what for her. For? No. Why? Mm -hmm. No, uh -huh. I want you to do the trap. It's your whole job. That's some garbage armor. This statue depicts an Amoa woman, her hand extending, grasping at air. An eroded, eroded plaque stands, or sits, near her, sits near her feet. Ugh. Something about the statue calls out to you, the echo of a fractured soul that tarried in this place for long and thoughtful years. You feel victory tinged by grief and regret. Let's hold her hand. You grasp her hand with tenderness. At first nothing happens, but then tiny droplets of water forms at the corner of her eye and rolls down her cheek, dripping onto the floor. Wipe away the tear. You reach out and draw your thumb down the statue's cheek, wiping away the trail of moisture. For a moment, the stone feels soft to the touch. Let's inspect the lingering soul. 
Your vision bobs with the motion of the sea. You stand aboard the swift the deck of swift winds, where your mates sharing bemused, self-congratulatory glances as they work. One of them claps you or claps your back with approval. We shake off the gesture. You step back and aim a reproachful look at your mate, however friendly his intent. You know there will be a time for reprieve when you are squared away in Nekataka. Something cuts through the water to your port side, an enormous shape just beneath the waves. Someone shouts that the winds have turned in your favor at last. This is followed by an enthusiastic cheer among the crew. You don't share their mirth. Eyes to the horizon, I say. You bring home a mighty gift, though it takes an unusual form. One that you pray to Nagati that you are able to keep in check. The vision dissipates and your land legs reassert themselves. Oh, heck up. The plaque. The words are much eroded and water damaged, but a few choice snippets and phrases stand out with clarity. Pariki, lore, and hunter. Cross the length of and back again. Murmured for a cunning deal. Ulfus. May her rest. Utility soul. Freedom. Closer scrutiny reveals that the inscription was pur purposefully marred, an act of sabotage done perhaps years ago. By the thoroughness, you suspect kith hands. This is the tomb of Periki. Such disrepair, I say. Tikehutats and size. Give me the order. What does the guildmaster have to say? The wheel. How it tugs at me. Ikira. And how bright you look. Myra's attention snaps towards a distant speck of light, but she shakes it off to remain in the moment. At least in death, I can complete a thought. She grimaces down at her swiftly diminishing body. My rod and the words of Pariki's devotion will open the way to the inner sanctum, past the sealed door. Myru closes her eyes and concentrates. Pity is Ngati, Lady of Lament. As the pearl orb of the heavens crosses her view, her eyes well with tears, as constant as rain. But the moon's skyward journey continues apace, the lover's affection as ephemeral as fingers touching. Myru opens her eyes again. She nods as her form grows indistinct. You must strengthen the wards, no matter what it tells you. Alright, thanks, bye. Her mouth moves again, emitting no sound. As she fades from sight, she raises her hand to point towards the entrance of the sanctum. She reaches to touch Takehu's teach cheek, blech. but of course her hand drifts through his skin. He shivers, touched by a passing breeze. Let's go. Indeed, let's go, but it'll be in the next video. I'm also going to get a drink of water. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. We have to go find the rod and then open something and then do something else. Take care.